This is Faith in Action, the program that looks at how ordinary people are putting their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is produced by Catholic Radio Indy. It covers a wide variety of guests and topics. If you have any comments or suggestions for the program, please contact Bridget, that's B-R-I-G-I-D, Bridget at catholicradioindy.org or call us at 317-870-8400. And now, here's today's edition of Faith in Action. This is Faith in Action on Catholic Radio. I'm Jim Ganley. Our co-host is Bridget Ayer. Hey, Jim. Good to be with you. And Bridget, we've got a great program lined up here that I really want to get to, but we always start with a prayer. So I'm going to make this a short prayer so we have lots of time for our program. Please join me. Lord God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Amen. Well, we got a great show, as Jim had mentioned, um, and I have to ask this, throw this question out to you. What does surfing the ocean <laughs> and connecting with God have in common? Do you know, Jim? I, I don't know. I actually, actually um, <laughs> our, our guest uh, is Bear Wozniak, and um, he and I have met each other in, in just the sketchiest of uh of, of situations that at one of the EWTN meetings, we sat at the same table. And I have to tell you, it was a big table. There were a lot of people at it, and he was way across the table, so I'm sure we shouted our names back and forth a couple of times. But anyhow, nice to see you again. And, and Bridget's question is great. What does surfing have to do with uh, the Catholic faith? Okay, well, Jim, ever since that ontological moment, 13 billion years ago, when God said, let there be light, light's a wave, and uh, there's sound waves, there's ultraviolet waves, there's all kinds of waves, and surfers ride them, and I just know, uh, when I ride a wave, I feel that real uh, closeness to God, and you know, we love to ride waves that are generated at least a thousand to maybe even four or five thousand miles away, those are caused by big low pressure systems way out, uh, you know, in the distance. But uh, when you really think about it, those waves are actually generated way, way out 13 billion years ago by that first, uh, that first moment of, of creation. And so when you ride a wave, it's different than skiing down a slope or playing basketball or even doing any sort of sport. You really, uh, you really have to become tuned into that wave. You know, you ride the wave. You don't get to make the wave. Uh, it's God's kuleana to make it and ours, ours to wait. And we have to cut a soul surfer rides that wave the way uh, the wave tells it to ride it almost. You know, there's a lot of ways to express yourself on it, but you can't do something on that wave if the wave doesn't uh, give you the the permission to do it or provide the, the wave face to do it. Sure. Now, we carry your program uh, each weekend here on EWTN, and I know each of the EWTN programs uh, have kind of a, a target audience. Some of them are geared toward women a little more than men. Some of them might be geared toward young people. Who is the Bear Wozniak Adventure geared for? Oh, that's really cool. Okay, so our target our target for the Bear Wozniak Adventure is men, but that's not who we're trying to get as an audience. We just know if it's gritty enough for the men to be attracted to it, that younger people, men and women, and women are drawn to it too. Because the women are already, I think women sometimes is kindling. They catch fire real fast, and men are kind of like slow burning oak that need to kind of get caught on fire and then when they do they become uh they just they just they just uh stay and they burn a deep hot burn for a long time but we love the women are the ones who bring the men to our show and the, and, and our women we call them our mama bears <laughs> they're ferocious they're protecting their family and they're bringing their the people that they love to the show so but i think our show is uniquely structured so that uh we can reach men where a lot of shows just won't that's a great point. We're talking with Bear Wozniak. He is a world champion surfer and author of a new book, um, The Surfer's Guide to the Soul. I got to ask you, before we got started here, you mentioned that you grew up in North Dakota. How did you end up <laughs> as a surfer, a world champion surfer? Well, you know what? I like what Father Mitch Pacwa says. I was born in Chicago, but got to Texas just as fast as I could. <laughs> I, I always think of him... Like, my son used to wear diapers and wear cowboy boots. I always think of that. I'm just dead <laughs> south. Well, you know, I'm Norwegian, which is that Viking blood, and I'm Ukrainian, and the Rus, uh, the Rus, uh, a tribe from Norway who came down and actually first founded uh, Kiev. 
And so there's no, that's why so many Ukrainians have blonde hair, blue eyes. And so that, that's, that's that same Norwegian Viking spirit that founded the, uh, Kiev. So, so I've got that Viking blood in me, that desire to get out in the ocean. And all I know is the first time I, I body surfed a wave and got tumbled and didn't know where I was, which way is up or down. From that moment, I was just like, I just wanted to be in the ocean. And so my parents moved us when I was just a little kid to Santa Cruz, California. And then in my young adulthood, I was in the Malibu area. And then, and then eventually I started traveling to Hawaii every year, then twice a year, then three times a year. And then my mom and dad moved to Molokai, where my dad was a Catholic deacon. And so it was really easy for me to make that rainbow connection over to Hawaii. And I've been living there for 25 years. So at what point did you, did you grow up Catholic? And, and at what point were you always connecting your faith to the waves when you were out there surfing? That's a good question. That, that was my first, I would call it like that, in search of the Holy Grail moment. You know the story of the youth who sees the Holy Grail and then searches for it his whole life? When I was about 13 or 14, I was on the beach at Seacliff Beach in Santa Cruz, and I was body surfing. My mom would say, you get out of the water till your lips turn blue because I don't like them so purple, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> cold water. And I would build sandcastles, and then I had, and in the morning I'd go, did I build it strong enough? Did it survive the tide, you know? And I'd come down, and then they're always gone. And um, I got this sense of, as long, long before I'm here, these waves have been breaking here. And when I'm gone, they're still going to be breaking here. So I had that sense of that timelessness, that eternity. And then I saw a sailboat, really big, beautiful sailboat, sailing over the horizon. And, you know, you can see about eight miles when you're standing on the beach to the horizon. And I had that sense of infinity. It was like this a moment, uh, serendipity, I guess, when I just realized how small I was, how great the universe is, how great the Creator is. But I, at the same time, I didn't feel insignificant. I felt like, well, the same God who made this, I know made me, and I knew as from my Catholic faith that he made me for a relationship with him. So it didn't, it didn't take away, it didn't make me feel smaller. It made me, it made me understand my dignity in that way. And from that moment, I wanted to go, I wanted to get to know God, but I always had this sense that God was, a, you know, kind of a God who sent child, a father that sent child support checks. Mm. You know, he's going to take care of me, but he's not going to hold me, mm-hmm. you know. And so when I was in college, I actually had a tremendous experience. This is way back at the beginning of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, and I had this experience at a Catholic prayer meeting that I wasn't expecting. And uh, when I was 19 years old, this tremendous infusion of the Holy Spirit into my life. And from that moment, I just remember going to college at Baylor. And Waco, I was ended up in Waco, Texas. My parents moved me there, moved us there while I was a senior in high school. And I went, ended up going to Baylor. I just remember if you were a college kid and you were sitting in the cafeteria alone, I was going to sit with you, and you're going to find out about the creator of the universe. Because I figured if you could know the creator of the universe in a personal way, wouldn't you want to? Yeah. And, and, and this book, a, a Surfing Guide to the Soul, it really talks about that story. And, and I've had a lot of failings and a lot of struggle and a lot of pain. And so when I'm really open and transparent about that and the journey that God's taken me through, most people can say the same thing about themselves. You know, mo- everybody's Rocky Balboa. Everybody's been knocked down and has to stand up. So most everybody gets that. And I, actually, when I meet people who read my book, they will come up and be very honest and open with me, too. So it's just that story of the soul in love with Jesus. And you know, even we're on, when we're unfaithful, He's faithful and how He leads us and draws us and woos us and, and, uh, and gives us time of, of aridity and, and uh, dryness and, and uh, just his faithfulness through the whole, the whole journey. Well, I, I took a peek at the opening of the book, and you talk about, I believe it's your son, Jeremiah, and he, you know, he calls you, and he's like, hey, Dad, you know, uh, th- there's these huge waves, I'm getting ready to go out. And talk about that story, and, and then why you ended up wanting to share um, about Jesus to him. I think that's how it ended. Well, you know what it is? It's like you, you were mentioning earlier how sometimes when you're on TV or radio, there's that moment of panic when things don't go right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a surf break here called Point Panic. Okay. You know? <laughs> if you see it, you're like, I don't want to surf there, but there, but we surf there. But when Jeremiah rode that 85-foot wave, um, the largest wave ridden in 40 years in Hawaii, uh, the Coast Guard actually said it was 100 feet, but in Hawaii, you always show humility, you underestimate, but there's video of him dropping in on a day when no one dropped in that day on the North Shore until late in the day when he did, and then a, then a few others did, too. When the wave is so big that you can only catch it, 
Like when you're riding a big wave, like any foot over any wave over twenty foot is a, is a killer wave. It's a big wave. When you ride waves bigger than that, bigger than twenty feet, you use a rhino chaser or we call them elephant guns, big boards, so you can paddle fast enough to drop in. But you don't need big boards to ride them. You just need big boards to catch them. But when they get more than thirty five feet, you really can't paddle fast enough to catch them. So you tow in behind a jet ski with a shorter board. And then you let go of the jet ski, and then you make those drops. And when you abandon yourself, when you drop into a wave that's even 10 foot plus, you're pretty much abandoned to that wave. And so my son Joshua called me from the North Shore and said, Dad, Crazy Todd's taking Jeremiah out. And he said, I've never seen it so big in my life. I jumped in my Hummer, jammed up to the North Shore, and, and I looked out and I saw the buoys, you know, the indicator buoys that are saying, this is the safe way into the harbor up there. They didn't exist. They were underwater. And I've been out on, on, on bigger, you know, big, big days. I've been in Chopu, which is, means the end of the road, in Tahiti when the, when it was, uh, 15 meters, they called it, because of course it's in Fran- uh, French sort of background, they use meters, but the lip was 12 foot thick and falling in a razor sharp reef, but I'd never seen anything like this. And so he had to make a decision out there. He had to decide for himself, and we've been training, you know, We've been uh, paddling out into Waikiki and uh, diving down and grabbing boulders and running underwater to train ourselves with cardio. And the tradition in Hawaii, too, is to hold your breath during the two minutes and 20 seconds it takes for the sun to set into the ocean. And so we had been training, but nothing can really prepare you for that. But his whole life he wanted that, and the opportunity came. And he had to make a decision, was he willing to die? Because when you ride waves bigger than 30 feet, you really have to decide that you're willing to die to do it but that your partner will will, will save you because you wear a vest with a hook on the back mm-hmm. so you can come by in the jet ski and throw you up on the big bully board on the back and then resuscitate you. But that drop has changed his life forever because everything he does now, he does with that sense of that. You know, when you drop into a wave like that, we call it being in the hands of God. And you feel the immensity of, of, of God when you're, you know, when you stand beneath a big... Uh, Redwood tree, mm-hmm. or you're on the you're on the edge of a cliff, you know the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. uh, the big sky country of Montana. You feel that immensity of God, but there comes that moment when you when we when we say yes to God and we abandon ourselves to His will. Like our 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 creed is that the most radical thing, the most radical quest you can have in life is to abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And God's will is wild; you can't tame Him, you know. And Christians are supposed to be bold, and you know, we've always have been. And so if you're going to give your life to Jesus, get ready for the ride of your life, but you're going to find that you're going to be more like yourself than you ever have been before. No question. Well, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we're going to talk more uh, with Bear Wozniak um, about his book and how we can get connected to God as well. So stay tuned for more. You're listening to Catholic Radio Indy, converting the culture to Christ through radio, featuring 100% Catholic programming 24-7. Do your friends a favor. Tell them about Catholic Radio Indy. Alexa, what's the weather forecast for today? Alexa, what time is the Colts game today? Alexa, remind me to pick up the dry cleaning tomorrow. Has Alexa become a part of your daily routine? Then make sure that routine includes Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Quick, easy access to Catholic programming 24-7. Just say, Alexa, play Catholic Radio Indy. Catholic Radio Indy. Welcome back to Faith in Action. I'm Bridget Ayer. Jim Ganley and I are in the studio. We're talking with our guest, Bear Wozniak. He is a world champion surfer and author of The Surfer's Guide to the Soul. And where I was going with that question before the break, which is really great um, insights that you shared, when I was reading that about your son going out on this big wave and you were, you know, jumped in your Hummer to go to the beach and check it out and see him. What was going through my mind was when I sent my kids off to college, did I prepare them? Were you, were you having those similar thoughts as you were like driving down to the beach to see this? Well, it's kind of like that, isn't it? I mean, his whole life, he used to death bomb, you know, on a skateboard down the mountain, down the hills by us, and mm-hmm. and he always dreamed he had big wave, big waves on his uh, posters on his walls, and so it's something he always wanted to do. And we we always surfed together. We traveled the world surfing and competing together. But um, and so all that could be done to prepare him. 
uh, and it wasn't ever like I made him do it. It was something he really wanted to do. Mm-hmm. But there is that moment where you got to let them just paddle out by themselves, right? And but, but there was a lump in my throat. I mean, I when I got to the North Shore, I never saw waves that big in my whole life. And so, the, with my children, though, the men need to lead by example. And so, when they see me up in the morning early praying, you know, uh, in my prayer chair, mm-hmm. which is different than my work chair. Or um, just, you know, when they were kids, I used to get pots and pans and say, let's make a joyful noise to the Lord and, you know, always see, the, see them to church. So there is that there is that preparation that goes on. And then there's just the, just seeing their father turning the channel or turning something off when it was inappropriate or his own eyes, uh, you know, being pure, his own life being pure. But they also saw me go through times of, you know, I don't know how much they were sheltered from it, but they saw me go through times of, you know, um, challenges financially and career wise and and all of that and then did I abandon hope or did I keep or did I keep going so I think that in that sense it prepared them for life and for a deeper walk with the Lord and they they knew all you know I have to say um, I have four children three of them have really are deep in the Lord and one we see we still keep praying for well, I think everyone can relate to that. They've got they've got some that are in the fold and some that are out. So you know, we just we just keep praying. I know you wanted to mention about the seasons um, as it relates to surfing, and then connect that to spirituality. Yeah, here in Indiana, we can't surf much in the winter time. <laughs> it's a little too cold. Besides, not having an ocean, that's a bit of a problem. But but, but Hawaii, <laughs> I, that, that's a good question. Uh, I suppose has seasons down there of some sort, right? Yeah, the way you know the season is by what direction the swell's coming from. So in the winter season, the low-pressure system is up north by Alaska, and those will send us our big swells. But in the summer, we just had five days of 20-foot surf in Waikiki. That's probably coming from someplace down by uh, Tahiti or maybe um, you know further south, even as far south as Antarctica. So, yeah, there's different seasons in our lives, and there's also, you know, I'm a Benedictine oblate, um, but, you know, if you look at the Carmelite, spirituality, the different seasons in that progression, there's the time. You think about the very first lesson you learn as a as a Christian is the time of uh, detachment. You know, surfers, we go down to the water, and we turn our back on the aina, the land, and we look out at the makai, and we, uh, and we kind of leave the busyness of the world behind us. We see the... Uh, we see the waves, we see how deep and profound the water is, and how it really doesn't change. But behind us, there's just this... Uh, this cacophony, like I'm hearing right now in the background <laughs> from a guy with a leaf blower, uh, <laughs> this cacophony of busyness. So the first thing we learn in our spiritual journey is to detach uh, from our selfish agendas, what we want to do, what the world wants us to do, and just turn our focus to the Lord. And then, you know, you paddle out. There's a time of purgation where you sometimes it's very difficult, like paddling out at Waimea Bay when it's 20 foot plus. You have to paddle battle to, to to get away from the shore, and it's dangerous. The first, the first, you know, two hundred yards, or actually more like four or five hundred yards, to get out through that heavy shore break, you got to paddle battle. And there's that time of purgation in our relationship when we have to leave behind us the, uh, you know, the sins, uh, the, the, uh, I guess our own agendas, our, our greed, our lust, and things like that. And we need to, um, we need to uh, uh, start develop new patterns and break out past that. That thing in us that keeps wanting to pull us back, we have to break, get past that, break free, and uh, and uh, start our new walk with the Lord, new our new time with the Lord. And then there's other, there's so many other things when you first drop into a wave, you know, being one with the Lord. And then the wipeouts and sharks in the water, and and uh, and of course my favorite thing to do, which is tandem surfing with my wife. Yeah, talk about that's where you uh, mentioned that that's where you got your world champion title. Um, I, and I saw a couple of the videos uh, that you have on your YouTube channel. Um, how in the heck did you get into that, and how is that kind of connected to spirituality? <laughs> well, I saw when I was I saw when I was probably twelve years old, and it blew my mind. And I said, I want to do that. And, uh, <laughs> and I began. I remember one time, and it got it, tandem surfing kind of disappeared. And one day I was judging a surf contest, and I see these guys coming by with these huge surfboards. And like, what are they doing? And then these women, very athletic women, come down, and then they paddle out together, and they go you're judging this contest. And I go, is this tandem surfing? And they go, yeah. Well, how do you judge it? Well, if it looks hard and it looks cool, then give them a high score. <laughs> well, now it's become now it's become really technical. We have three judges with a computer that just judge on the 45 different lifts. You have to hold them for so long. And, and then how well you carve while you're during a, during a lift, surfing. 
But I met my wife tandem surfing. I was out here in Cocoa Beach on an Easter Sunday. We we're out here from Hawaii traveling here like we are now. And, uh, and this, this beautiful woman, uh, jumped up. My friend Eileen said, anybody wants to learn to tandem, come and come and Bear will teach you. And she jumped up and said, pick me, pick me. Now, if you know my wife, she's very demure. It's out of her nature to do that. But she'd been watching. She'd come down to the beach for eight years watching whenever we showed up for a contest. It's what she really wanted to do. So I taught her how to tandem. And I remember our first contest. I said, will you be my partner for when I'm out here? And she said, yeah. So our first contest, we didn't paddle out. We, uh, I always, my whole life, I always wanted to jump out of a helicopter into the, into a surf contest. And that happened that day. We jumped out of a helicopter and all the competitors were like, ah, oh, they're not here. They didn't make it. We're going to win. And then we jump in and we win the contest. And, but when you're surfing with your wife, it's really something that way that when we paddle, I'm the captain of the ship. And you think about a soul in love with Jesus as the woman being on that board. We paddle together very hard. We catch that wave. I get up first, but then I pull her back, and she jumps up and comes back to me with her back against my chest and her cheek against my cheek. So when I'm turning and carving, she knows how to help me and what, what my intentions are. But then there comes that moment when I'll press down on her hip to let her know I want to lift her. But then she has to jump. And there's a moment in that wave when I set the rail, this is the moment to do it or don't, or we're not going to do it. I set the rail and I press down on her hip, but then she jumps, and she jumps with all of her might, and then I can lift her. And that's kind of like that image of ours with Jesus. Jesus can't lift you if you don't jump. There's a way in which you rest in the Lord, like John back against Jesus at the Last Supper. Mm-hmm. Uh, there has to be a resting first, but then there comes that leap of faith, and you have to jump or God can't lift you. And then when I lift her, I never feel more like a man, and she never feels more beautiful. She's, she's valiant and I call her full of grace. Um, and it, it's so cool when we, when we, here's another thing. She asked me when we first met, did you have some back surgeries on your back? And I said, no. And then she asked me like two months later, are you sure you never had back surgeries? And I go, no. And she goes, well, why is there so many like knife-like scars on your back? That's from me surfing a wave with a woman and coming into it, someone dropping in on us or, or suddenly the wave breaks out and, and, and you're, you're on the reef. And uh, me pulling her, dropping her, pulling her to me, and jumping off the board backward, and then being drugged across the reef by the leash, you know, my board pulling me because I'm leashed to it. And uh, and so I, I have all these scars on my back from doing that. And, you know, it's like, that's what Jesus does, right? Mm. He protects us. He saves us. And, and by his stripes, we are healed. So there's just so much to surfing, especially tandem surfing, and that final stage of the Carmelite spirituality of nuptial union. So... Yeah, we we tandem surf two or three times a week, and it's just I never feel more alive, and I know she doesn't either. Then when we're doing that together, we fell in love when we got married. <laughs> so happy! Oh, that sounds awesome. Well, I want to ask the you the greatest adventure of all, marriage. Yeah, no doubt about that. And being a Christian, I mean, they're both they're both Amen. up there. I got to ask you um, in terms of um, the book, uh, the Surfer's Guides to the Soul. Who's it, who's the audience? Who's that book designed for? Who should read that book? I was fascinated. You know, I, that that book is a net. So I, another other, another book that I have is more of a, a targeted towards people that are already good, moving on the Lord. But this book anybody can read. People that are like Jeanette Bankovic told me this. She uses it for Lectio Divina. You know, so anybody can. Who I love Jeanette, Jeanette but Jeanette. But you can you, you the book is for everyone. But it's particularly like with Father's Day coming up. My book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and this book, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, a great Father's Day present. They're a great graduate present, the this, uh, this Surfer's Guide to the Soul especially. Um, so it's really meant for everyone, but this book in particular, it's written, it's, it's got a lot of narrative, a lot of storytelling. So it's not all, unusual for someone to say, I sat down and read the whole book without, without closing it. So the narrative carries people through, and then in this kind of Rocky Balboa sort of, experiences going through, pedaling my bicycle across the United States, running with the bulls of Pamplona, pa- paddling the 35-mile Molokai Channel, and all these adventures are just kind of little hooks to draw people in to continue to hear the story about uh, Jesus and that that uh, that quest for, for deeper intimacy with him. So that book, this book, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul, is meant for everyone. You know, anyone, any child, sixth grade and older, fifth grade and older, would love it. But um, the, my other book is more dedicated towards people who are in the Lord and want to go deeper with them. Where can people get a copy of the book? 
Well, we'd love for them to go to our website, deepadventure.com. That's uh, where we women who, if they want to, they, become, they can become mama bears, and the men can be, join the Mad Cave at our three-year school of manliness. And when you join, then you get access to, to a, all of our episodes of Long Ride Home, the TV show, the motorcycle TV show, even episodes that EWTN doesn't have anymore. Or, they, of course, they can go to Sophia, who, Sophia, who published it, or they can go to Amazon. If you go to Amazon, write a good review. Cause that, that always helps. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm curious, what, what did you take away in writing this book? How, how did it impact your faith? We just got a couple minutes left. Yeah, but, well, you know, it's like that tapestry, I think, in the Sistine Museum, where mm-hmm. they say when you look at it from the backside, it just, you, it's just a scramble of knotted uh, uh, threads. But when you go around it and look from the front side, it's like, oh, my gosh, this is beautiful. And I think going through that, going through those different seasons in my life, and I could see, oh, this is this terrible thing. When I said, God, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> no, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> or when I blew it, whatever. When I when I could see it within perspective, go on the other side of that, that, um, and and see, oh, this is what you were doing, Lord. And even and I like to say, even when I was unfaithful, He is faithful, as as, as Scripture says, that He was always there with me, even when I stumbled even when I fell he was there and, and he I know what I have in store for you plans for peace not destruction a future reserved for you full of hope if you seek me I will let you find me if you seek me with all your heart I will let you find me I think that's the, that's what I got out of that of my writing the book well I hope to live vicariously um, as I read the book uh, and get out there in the waves because I've never done that and I doubt I ever will but I'm gonna do it uh, with you by reading that book and and I'm sure connecting with God um, even more as I do that. So we are out of time, Bear. Our guest today has been Bear Wozniak, a world-class surfer and author of The Surfer's Guide to the Soul. Um, You can get his book at, tell us the website one more time, deepadventures.com. Is that where you want people to go? Deepadventure.com or, of course, Amazon. All right. Or Sophia. And don't forget, you can catch the Bear Wozniak Adventure every Saturday afternoon at 6 p.m. right here on Catholic Radio Indy. Thanks so much, Bear, for being our guest today. Okay, aloha. You've been listening to Faith in Action, the program that looks at how ordinary people are putting their faith into action in their everyday lives. Faith in Action is produced by Catholic Radio Indy. This program and all Faith in Action programs can be heard or downloaded as podcasts from catholicradioindy.org. If you have a comment or suggestion for guests or topics for the program, please contact Bridget. That's B-R-I-G-I-D, Bridget at CatholicRadioND.org, or call us at 317-870-8400. This program has been pre-recorded.